Hi, my name is Luke. So I'm a graphic designer from Ontario, Canada, and I specialize in logos and apparel design for the sports industry. My style is a mix of modern and classic with a focus on clean typography and bold marks. I use Affinity Designer for a lot of my designs. And today we're going to be making a brand kit for a fictional sports team, the Affinity Wild Hockey Club. Before we get into the tutorial, I just want to go over a few shortcuts that I use throughout the video. Let's start with duplicating. The first way of duplicating an object, pretty simple, copy and paste. Command C and Command V to make a copy. The second way of duplicating would be a click and drag using Shift and Command and clicking and dragging, or Shift and Alt and dragging. Both work. Next thing is to move objects forward and backwards. You can do this in the Layers panel by clicking on the object and dragging it up and down in the Layers panel. Or with your object selected, you can press Command plus the square bracket key to move it forward. The right bracket will move it forward. The left bracket will move it backwards. This will be really handy throughout the tutorial. Next is bringing up your Characters panel, which is Command-T. This will come in handy when we start working with typography. Next is Tracking, which is the space between all the letters. I'll get into this more in the video, but basically how you would do this is select all of your text. I'm clicking in there with the text tool and pressing Command-A to select everything, or you can click and drag. And in your Characters panel, the second icon under Positioning and Transform is Tracking. You can use this arrow to drop down and pick a lower or higher percentage, or you can actually click right on the icon, and while holding your click down, drag left to decrease tracking, and drag right to increase tracking. To do this on your keyboard, you would select all of your text and press Command, Option, or Alt, and then press the arrow key. The right arrow key will bring everything closer together. The left arrow key will move everything farther apart. And finally, we have kerning, which is similar to tracking, but it's just the space between two letters. And it works the exact same way as tracking, but instead of selecting all of your letters, you just put your cursor between the two letters you want to move, and you can press Command-Alt and use the arrow key, left to move further apart, right to move closer together, or you can go into the Positioning and Transforms panel and click and drag on this icon, left to bring it closer together, right to go farther away, or you can type in an exact percentage, use the little up and down arrows, or use the drop down to pick something. So that's just a quick run through of some of the shortcuts that I'll use throughout this video. So we're going to open Affinity Designer and let's just take a look at our final result. We're going to be making a small collection for a fictional hockey team, the Affinity Wild Hockey Club. So up here we have our colors, but this is really what we're going to be making. We're going to make a brand mark using the letter A with a tree in the negative space. We're then going to take that mark and make a secondary apparel design with a 3D effect and some warped text. And then we're gonna take our mark and put it into a classic circle badge. So let's get started with a new file. I use one of the presets under web, which is social media square. And the only thing that I change is I press this box to create artboard. So here's our first artboard. And before we do anything, let's just save. We'll start by naming this artboard. This is our project info. Throughout the process, we can refer back to this to see brand colors, our mandatory text, and as we create final designs, we can put them here so they're all in one spot. Now that we have that, we can get on to our brand colors. In the swatches panel, we go to the hamburger menu and add global color. Our first color is our base color, that background canvas color. So I'm going to name it canvas. And the hex code for this is E9. E7, DA, and I'll just press tab just to preview this. And that looks good, so we'll add it. 
We'll do that again, add global color, and this one is going to be our forest green. And down here, we'll type in the hex code 044735. And I'll just press tab to preview that and then add it to our document swatches. Those are our two main brand colors, but I'm gonna have one more color. So add global color, and I'm gonna name this subtract. This is just gonna be a high contrast color that we can use to identify anything that we're going to subtract from another object. This will make more sense later, but it's good to have. So now that we have our artboard set up, just click on it and we can change the color of this background from white to our canvas color. I like to do this when I'm working on apparel, make the background the color that the shirt's actually gonna be. That way you kind of get an idea of how the colors work and how the overall feel is. So now we can start to put in some of our project info. I'm just gonna draw out a rectangle. Doesn't really matter what it looks like and change the color to our forest green. That way we can always kind of reference back to this. I'm gonna press Alt and Shift and drag over another rectangle and I'm gonna make this our canvas color. Obviously it disappears, so select it again and I'm just going to add a one point stroke on this. Now we can see it and I'm gonna put in our mandatory information. So with the text tool, I'm just going to type out Affinity Wild Hockey Club. Make sure there's no typos and we can always reference back to this. I'm gonna change it to our brand color of the forest green and I'm gonna choose the font. So I'm using a paid font called Carta Noir, but if you're looking for a free version, I would recommend the Google font Oswald. So I can pull that up now just to compare. Obviously they're not the exact same, but if we turn on all caps here, you can see that they're pretty close. And if you're not looking to spend any money, you can get a really great result. So I'm just gonna remove that and keep the font I'm actually gonna use. And now we've successfully set up our project info artboard and we can get started with our brand mark. So on the left side over here, the second icon is the artboard tool. Once we click that, the top row is gonna change up here and we can press insert artboard. As you see, we get another artboard that's the exact same size and we can change this to be our canvas color and we can rename it logo mark. Now we're gonna import our sketch. So we can go up here to file and place. We're gonna locate our sketch, affinity mark, and open. Just gonna click and drag from the top corner and snap this into place. I'm gonna lock this layer. If you go over to the layers panel and hover over here, you can toggle that on and off. So we'll just lock this so we don't accidentally move it. Now, some people would think that you would build out this letter by finding an existing font and modifying it, which would work, but this is actually made out of some pretty basic shapes, just some triangles, some rectangles, and that's it. So we're just gonna make this thing from scratch. On the left-hand side, we'll go to our shapes and we'll just click and we'll go to the triangle. We'll change our fill to the forest green and we'll make sure that the stroke is turned off. And we'll just draw out a triangle holding down the command key. That will allow us to transform from the middle. We don't have to line it up perfect, but we'll just get it in the right spot. And with the move tool up here, we can click align center and just center it to our artboard. I'm gonna move this behind the drawing so we can see what we're working with. And you can do that by going over to the layers panel and clicking and dragging below, or you can use the command square bracket keys to move them forward or backwards. So now we have our triangle behind and it's not quite lined up. So I'm just gonna drag it up a little bit and holding down command, I'm gonna drag it out a little bit and that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna make a copy of this just so we have this for later to make the tree shape, just to make sure that these angles are the exact same and we don't get an awkward looking A. So this point is obviously going too far and there's a couple ways we could get rid of this, but I think the easiest is to use the corner tool. We'll grab this top node and we'll just pull down. 
By default, this is just rounded. But with the corner tool selected, we can go up here and we can click on different options. So I'm gonna click the straight option. And now we can move this to be in the spot we want. Next, we're just gonna draw some rectangles to make the slabs on these bottom pieces here. So I'm just gonna roughly draw that out and then move it into position. And now I'm gonna make another copy on the other side. And then I'm gonna make a third copy and I'm just going to press align center and then holding down command, dragging out, we can make that top slab. So what we're gonna do next is we're going to make the tree shape. We have our extra triangle over here and this is where our subtract color is gonna come in handy. So we can go to our fill and make it the subtract red. That way it's very obvious that we're gonna get rid of this. Just holding down shift, we can drag this into place, make it the right size, make sure it's aligned to the center, and then holding down alt and shift, we can make a duplicate of this. And then to finish off the tree, we just need a small rectangle down here for the trunk. And now we have all of the pieces to make this. But we're gonna make this on a different artboard. That way, if we need to go back, we didn't lose anything. So I'm gonna duplicate this artboard down. All I did there was click and drag using Alt and Shift, and now we have a duplicate. On this artboard, I'm just gonna go into the layers and toggle down, and I'm gonna delete our sketch. We don't need this anymore. We have everything built out. So I'm gonna select everything on this artboard. And over on the left-hand side, there's the Shape Builder tool, or you can just press the letter S on your keyboard. We're gonna start by subtracting. So everything that's red, we're gonna draw. And then up here on the top left, we have these actions and we're gonna press delete. And now we're left with just the A with the tree shape punched out. And we can repeat that process, this time drawing over everything that's green and pressing the add. Okay, so that's it for our mark. So we can just copy this and paste it onto our project info. So we know that this is the final result. Now that we have our letter mark done, we're ready to move on to the next step, which is creating a 3D version of this with some warp text. So with our artboard tool selected, we're just gonna insert a new artboard. We'll rename this to 3D mark, and we'll change the fill color of this artboard to our canvas color. We'll start off by selecting our final logo mark from this artboard and pasting it onto this one. All we have to do now is make a duplicate of this layer. So I'm gonna copy and paste this. In the back one, we're going to name base. And the top one, we're gonna name front, just so we don't get them mixed up. We're gonna select the front layer and change this to our canvas color. For a moment, everything's gonna disappear but that's okay. With our base layer selected, we're gonna go over to the left-hand side and choose this tool fourth from the top, the contour tool. With this selected and our base layer selected, click and drag to the right. This is going to expand our shape. Something around here looks pretty good, but the corners are too soft. So if we go up to the top, we have our corner options and we can switch this to a miter join. With our base layer selected, we're gonna to go to the contour tool and up at the top at the far right, there's a button that says bake appearance. We're gonna click that and that's going to set the changes we've made. So now it is permanently expanded to this size. The only thing that's left to do is to get rid of these two middle triangles. With our base layer selected, we can use the node tool to select just these points and simply delete them. Now in our layers panel, we're gonna select the base layer and we're gonna just copy and paste it. With our second copy, we're gonna move it down and to the right, just using the arrow keys. There's no exact point for this, but something like this looks good. What we're gonna do now is connect these corners because we can see how this is going to become a 3D shape, 
but right now it's clearly not there. So in our layers panel, we'll select both of these shapes. Now we're gonna use the pen tool to fill in these areas. So I'm gonna just press P to bring up my pen tool. And since we have both of these base layers selected, we can easily lock to these nodes and know for sure that we're selecting right on the corner. As you see, mine got a little messed up because my fill actually isn't set. I have a stroke of the forest green. So I'm gonna press this little arrow key up here by our swatches, and that's gonna swap them. So now you can see that this is right. We have a fill and it's right in the corners. And now we're gonna repeat that again. So we'll select both our base layers and using the pen tool, we'll select some more of these corners to fill in the gap and make sure that we fill it with our forest green. Once we connect all the corners, you can see that we now have a 3D shape. But if I go up here into the top bar and I click the wireframe view, you can see that this is made up of a whole bunch of random triangles holding it together. And this isn't really great for our final artwork. So I'm gonna to toggle that off. And again, we're, we're gonna duplicate this artboard just in case we ever wanna go back and make adjustments. All these layers are still there separately. On our new artboard, we're gonna select everything but the shape of the letter A, everything but this canvas color. I'm gonna do this by going into the layers panel over here, selecting the top green shape, and then going to the bottom, holding down shift, and clicking on the last layer. Now that we have all of this selected, there's a couple ways that we could merge this together. We've already used the shape builder tool earlier to draw and connect all these together, and you could definitely do that again. You could draw all of these shapes, and then press add, and we would have it. But when I have a lot of shapes like this, the tool that I prefer to use is just the add tool up here at the top, and that's gonna merge everything together. So the shape builder is awesome, and it's really good when you need to add and subtract at the same time. But when you have a bunch of shapes that you just need to quickly get together, I really like the add tool. So the last thing that's left in this mark is to add the text on the bottom. It might seem like that's tough to do, but with some of Affinity's tools, it's actually quite simple. So we're gonna start off by just typing out our word, which is our hockey team name, the wild. So I'm just typing out the word wild. And we have to adjust a couple things before we can get to the warp. For one, this isn't the right font. So you can bring up your character panel by pressing Command T. Mine's already here, but Command T will get rid of it and bring it up. I'm gonna go and select a new font which from the beginning we decided was Carta Noir or Oswald Bold. Now that we have this, we can just generally position it. And before we warp it, I like to adjust the kerning and tracking. So if you're not familiar, tracking is the space between letters. It's how spread out all the letters are. And kerning is the space between individual pairs of letters. So this might seem a little overwhelming for some, but it's really simple and it makes the difference between a good design and a great design. So just looking at this, it's pretty close to perfect, but I wanna space them out a little bit. So I'm gonna select everything and start by going up to our alignment and I'm going to center the text. That way when we change the tracking, it's changing from the center. In the positioning and transform dropdown over here, we can up the percentage of our tracking, which is the second option here. If you hover, you can see this is tracking. So I'm gonna just drag and spread these letters out a little bit. I think that's looking a little better. It was a little too crammed for me before. And if we wanna really nitpick, we can do a little kerning by putting the cursor between two letters and this top icon over here, this is kerning. And if we drag that, you'll see it just changes the space between two letters. For this 3D design, it's really not that crucial. I think it's gonna look pretty good. It's only one word. But later on when we're making a badge, it's gonna help to have a little bit of understanding of these two tools. Now we're ready to warp it. So with this layer selected, we can go to the layers panel and down at the bottom, we have 
a warp tool. It's this little icon that looks like a grid. If you click on that, we get a whole drop down. We're going to use perspective. And when you click that, nothing changes right away, but we get these four corners that we can move with our node tool. I'm going to use the node tool to select and just drag these points out. I'm going to do the best job I can to make sure that these letters follow the same line as our bottom plane here. And it's that simple. That's how you take some text and quickly warp it to look like it's sitting on the bottom face of this 3D letter. The cool thing about this is that this is still text that we can edit. If we click in here, you can see we can delete, we can type things, we could change the font, we could adjust kerning and tracking if we find any errors. I'm actually going to bring these two letters a little closer together. Same with this last pair, I'm going to bring them a little closer together. And that's pretty awesome that we can make those changes and still keep this perspective. But now that we're done, we actually don't want that capability anymore. We want it to just be flat artwork. So again, we're just going to duplicate this artboard down. This will be our final. So all we have to do now is convert this to curves. So when you have the wild layer selected up at the top, you can press convert to curves. If for some reason you don't see that, you can get to this by going to layer and down here, convert to curves. So if we look at our wireframe view, you can see that this is very clean artwork. If we scroll up, you can see that this is still a working file, which is good if we have to go back and make a change. And this is better for our final artwork. So I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to select everything here and group it with command G and I'm going to copy and paste it onto our project info board. So now we have our two letter marks and we're ready to move on to our badge design. Start off our badge design. We're just going to create a new artboard. So go to our artboard tool and press insert artboard. We're going to name this one badge and change our fill color to canvas. Now we just have to insert our badge sketch and then we'll work on building the structure and adding typography. So go to file place and insert the badge sketch and drop it into place. Just like last time, we're going to go into the layers panel, find the lock icon and lock this layer so we don't accidentally move it. I'm going to work underneath of this layer so we can see what we're doing. I'm going to start off by getting the circle tool and I'm just going to drag a circle out from the center of the artboard, holding down command and shift. Once I have that, I'm just going to put this behind the sketch layer using my command bracket keys or just simply dragging it in the layers panel. I'm going to change the stroke on this to be the forest green. In our stroke panel up here, we have some options. Right now it's set to five point. I'm going to make that something around seven point. The butt cap, that's good. The miter join, doesn't matter because we're using a circle. And for the alignment, I'm going to use the first icon, which is align center. This doesn't matter too much. You could align to the inside or the outside, and it would pretty much look the same. But for this, I'm just going to stick to align center. Now I'm going to make a copy of this. And by holding down command and shift, I'm going to drag this down to be our center circle. For this, I'm going to remove the stroke by pressing this button up here, and I'm going to change the fill to our forest green. As you see, we're going to be putting our letter mark right in the center so we can go back to our project info board, grab this and just drop it in here. With the mark selected, you can just use these alignment tools up at the top to align it in the center, both horizontally and vertically. We'll change our mark to the canvas color and holding down command and shift, we'll scale this down into place. All that's left for this step is to build the banner. It might look complicated, but with Affinity's donut tool, this is actually really simple. In the shapes drop down, we have a tool called donut tool. We're going to select that. And from the center of our artboard, holding command and shift, we're going to drag out a donut. 
First, I'm going to move this behind our sketch layer so we can see where we have to align it. And I'm going to change the fill from canvas to force green. So right now it kind of looks like we just made a circle. But if we select this object and click on the donut tool, we have some more options. This little red dot in the bottom left corner will let us change the radius of the hole. So just drag that until it's aligned with our sketch. And the next tool is this other red dot in the top right hand corner. If we click and drag that, we can set our start and end points. So with a couple clicks, we now have a banner. All we have to do is create shapes that we're going to subtract to create this triangle at the ends of our banner. I'm going to do this with the pen tool. I'm just going to click in the corner of the banner and then click to where the banner ends in our sketch. And then I'm going to go up to this corner and I'm just going to close that path and fill it with our subtract red. And we could repeat this step on the other side or we can select this object, make a copy of it, and up at the very top, we have these tools to flip. I'm gonna press the first icon, which is flip horizontal. And then we're going to drag that over until it snaps with our banner on the right-hand side. Now we have everything ready to start subtracting and building our badge. Let's duplicate this artboard, just in case we ever have to go back and make changes. Now on our new artboard, we can remove this sketch and we'll start by subtracting these shapes. So just select all three of them by holding down shift and clicking. Just press S to bring up the shape builder tool and then draw everywhere that's red. And in the top left-hand corner, we're gonna press subtract. If we refer back to our sketch at the beginning, there were these two little dots. We're just gonna add those back in now with the circle. There's no exact size or spot for this. It's kind of just a little shape to fill some space in our badge. When I'm designing badges, I often try to find things to fill the small pockets to make the badge feel a little bit more complete. So we're just gonna use these two little dots. And now we're ready to start adding typography. To add typography, we have to start by drawing our path. So using the ellipse tool, we're gonna to simply draw out a circle from the center of our badge. Once we have our path, we just need to use the text tool and click anywhere on the path to give us the ability to start typing. I'm gonna type in the name of our team, which is the Affinity Wild. When you typed in your text, if it was on the inside of the path and looked something like this, all you have to do is select your text tool and up at the top bar, click on this little rounded arrow that says reverse text path. That will change the text alignment from the inside to the outside. This will come in handy later too. Now with our text selected, let's make sure that our type is aligned to the center. By default, it's probably set to left align. We want to go to the icon to the right of that, which is center align. As you can see, nothing really changed. Our text still isn't really centered. That's because we have to use these little green and red arrows to indicate the start and end point of our text. So I'm going to drag the green arrow to the center of our badge on the left-hand side and do the same thing on the right-hand side with the red arrow. Now our text is aligned to the center and we can use the move tool to position this to be between our inner and outer circle. This is already looking pretty good, but I want to adjust the tracking and kerning a little bit so the space between our letters and this big gap between our words is reduced. So with the text tool, I'm gonna to click between our words affinity and wild. And in the characters panel, with the first option up here, I'm going to reduce the kerning percentage. This will bring our two words closer together. Now I'm going to adjust the kerning between some other letters, like the W and the I has a bigger gap than some of the other letters. Same with the T and the Y. This might seem tedious, but it really does make a big difference at the end. Now that I'm happy with the kerning, I have a little bit more space to increase the font size. That's looking pretty good to me. Now we're ready to start doing the typography on the bottom half of our badge. All we have to do is repeat the steps from the top half. We'll start by drawing out an ellipse from the middle of our badge. 
After I draw this out, I'm going to select the move tool and up at the top, I'm just going to press on the center align on both the vertical and horizontal, just to make sure that this is perfectly centered. Just like last time, I'm going to click on the text tool and then click anywhere on our path to start typing. This time we're going to type out hockey club. As you can see, our text is on the outside of our path, but just like last time with our type tool selected, we can go up to the top and we can press reverse text path. Now our text is aligned to the inside. We're going to switch the fill color of this from our forest green to our canvas color. And with our text tool, we're going to move the green and red arrows again, aligning them to the center on both the left and the right hand side. Once that's aligned to the center, I'm going to use the move tool, pressing command and shift just to position our words in the center of our banner. I like to make sure that the space at the bottom and at the top is equal. This is pretty close to done, but as you see, these letters are way too crowded together. I'm going to fix this by selecting everything and increasing the tracking. So as we increase the tracking, you can see this is starting to look better. There's still some issues that we can fix with kerning. We can bring the words hockey and club closer together by putting our cursor there and decreasing the kerning. We can also reduce the font size for this text in the banner by just a couple of points. I'm going to adjust the kerning between some of these letters. The Y and the E were a little too close together. The K and the E needed to be a little closer together. The O and the C can be closer together. The L and the U need to be closer together because of the pocket that the L creates. And the U and the B are getting a little bit too close to each other. So you can just go through and letter by letter make these small adjustments and it'll make a big difference in the final result. I'm just going to make sure that this is centered. And I'm pretty happy with that typography. I just want to make one minor adjustment to our letter mark. Although we centered it perfectly to the design, optically it looks like it's sitting a little low because of the shape of the A. So I'm just going to move this up slightly with the up arrow on my keyboard. Even though it was technically centered, it just fell off. These little adjustments will make a big difference. Now we're ready to duplicate this artboard and convert everything to curves. We'll start with our typography. In our layers panel, I'm going to select both these text layers and up at the top, I'm going to press convert to curves. So now this is no longer text that we can edit. It's flattened artwork, which is perfect for us. We can always go back to our previous artboard and make adjustments if we need to later on. The only thing that's left is to expand the stroke. So with our bottom circle selected, we'll go up to layer and down near the bottom, expand stroke. If we turn on our wireframe view, you can see that we now have clean artwork for our final result. And if we scroll up, we still have all of our text and our strokes that we can edit if we need to go back. I'm going to group all of this together and add it to our project info board. And just like that, we've created an entire set for our fictional hockey team. And we still have all of our working layers that we can go back and make changes to if we need to. The last thing that's left is to create a new document for our final artwork. I'm going to create a new document for our final artwork. Just like at the beginning, I'm going to choose social media square and I'm going to turn on create artboard. I'm going to press Command S to save this document and name it Affinity Wild Final. Let's start by going to our dev file and grabbing our final artwork. Just pressing and holding shift, I'm going to select our letter mark, our 3D design, and our badge design, and copy and paste them into our final working file. I'm going to move these off the artboard. I'm going to name this first artboard Affinity Wild Letter Mark. In this stage, it's important to name our artboards because when we export, it will take the name of our artboard. I'm going to move our letter mark onto this 
and scale it up using Shift and Command. Using the Artboard tool, I'm going to insert a new artboard and name this one Affinity Wild 3D. I'm going to move our 3D mark onto this board and scale it up. I'm going to make another artboard and name this one Affinity Wild Badge and move our badge design onto this one. Now that we have an artboard for each of our designs and it's properly named, we're ready to export. For this, we're going to move from the designer persona to the export persona. In the top left hand corner, you can see the Affinity Designer logo. This is the designer persona. To the right of this, we have the pixel persona, and to the right of that, we have the export persona. We're going to click on this icon. Now the UI has changed and is showing us a lot more export options. By default, we have the slices panel on the right hand side, and you can see all three of our designs are there and properly named. If we click the arrow beside them, you can see we have our export options. By default, we just have PNG at 1x. PNGs are great to have, but we probably want something a little higher resolution. So I'm going to switch this from 1x to 3x. Although PNGs are great to have, we probably want a vector file as well. So underneath of this PNG group, there's a plus icon. If we click on that, we'll have the option to add another export option. I'm going to select a vector format like PDF. And now we have our two export options for this design, but we need it for the other two as well. Rather than repeating this process, we can simply go up to this icon in our slices panel that says copy export format to clipboard. We can click on that. We can select our other two layers and press on the icon to the right to paste. Now if we toggle these down, you can see that we also have those options for these designs. All that's left to do is to press the export icon to the right of each of these designs and make sure that you are exporting these to a new folder for your final artwork. I'm going to repeat that for the other two designs. And just like that, with a few clicks, we have a folder with all of our final artwork. Thanks for following along. I hope you got a lot from this. If you have any questions, feel free to send me a message over on Instagram, and I hope to do another one of these in the future.